You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Benazzi from OptionPit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it's time to kick off 2018 in grand style. Yes, it's time for the first episode of the Option Block of the New Year. And I am quite excited, if you can't tell from my voice. My name is Mark Longo, of course, from the old optionsinsider.com. A fun website. You may want to check it out every now and then if you're into those their options things. And I'm guessing you are because you're listening to this. Posted, posted some fun top 10, top 5 breakdowns, uh, the top articles on the side of last year, top shows. Just posted the top uh, five episodes of Option Block. May want to check that one out. Going to get to that in a little bit. Got more coming for, for other shows later on in the week. So stay tuned for that. And as always, you can always listen to this program after the fact on all of your podcast providers of choice. Or if you want to kick it up a notch, maybe you want to join us live. New year, maybe time to try out some new things. Try the old live stream, Mixler.com slash what is the old mix mixer.com slash options hyphen insider grab it once set it and forget it. it's the same link every time not just for this show but for all the shows that we do live so this show maybe a little bit of boot camp a little bit of ball views a little bit of twifo all the fun stuff we do live comes out via that link so grab it once set it and forget it and you too can enjoy the live madness that is the option block and again however you listen Keep those questions coming strong. I do apologize. We've been so busy on some of our other shows wrapping up 2017. we got a nice little backlog of questions. We'll see if we can knock that down a bit today. And to help me do just that, i got my cohorts, my partner in, in partners, plural, in crime, I'm ready to kick off a new year in grand style. Starting off, let's go in order of excitement. You know he's always excited. excited. <laughs> Easy for me to say today. It's a new year. I'm very excited. And who's even more excited is, of course, Uncle Mike Tussaud. From RCM Wealth Advisors, you can just feel the enthusiasm dripping through the microphones, listeners, as he joins us. Uncle Mike, Happy New Year to you. Are you ready to kick off OB 2018 in grand style, sir? No, oh, Happy New Year, and, and, and I'm going to kick it off in grand style right here, right now, because never before in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a, t a better time to sell than right now. Well, maybe about nine this morning I was probably a better time, but... Nonetheless, it's an exciting day, new all-time highs, uh, and uh, really a lot to talk about today, so very excited about the upcoming show. And also joining us, probably a little bit lower on the excitement scale, but we'll see if we can juice him up to 11. He is the meatball himself, Mr. Mark Sebastian, from Option Pit and Carmen Line, and whatever the heck the new fund is called. <laughs> Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the program, sir. Hey, yeah, it's also a Carmen Line fund, it's just... Uh, Fund number two, and uh, it's officially launched as of uh, last Friday, and uh, everything's great. It's a happy new year. It's a beautiful new year. It's a lovely new year. It's good to be here. Uh, it's good to be heard. Uh, it's great to be alive. Happy new year to all. I figured the new fund was called maybe the Equator or the Prime Meridian because, you know, you like your lines. Of I do. I do like my lines. The Prime Meridian Fund is not a bad name. <laughs> there we go. My I like that. 
I do. I may I may steal that. You could be the fund around which all others set their their they orient themselves. So there you go. That's then I'm going to start a fund and call it the Tropic of Capricorn. Oh well, there we go. Now we're getting uh, now we're getting crazy and exotic. Before we get to the Tropic of Cancer, let's keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block for this first option block episode here of 2018. What a week it's been, as Uncle Mike alluded to. Uh, setting new highs pretty much right out of the gate this year. No messing around, no fiddling about, no saying, you know, you know, maybe we're going to sell a little bit for some tax selling in the beginning of the year. None of that craziness. We're just going to roar right out of the gate. Uh, most of, pretty much all the major indices setting new all-time highs. S&P now over 2,700. Dow crossed 25,000. Yes, I said that, 25,000 listeners this is indeed i think the first i think 23 days now uh for the next the last thousand points in the dow so i do believe that is a new all-time record so we're just blowing away the just when we think the bull maybe wants to take a break maybe the bull a little tired he's been running for quite some time maybe he wants to give his horns a rest uh he says you know what i'm coming into the new year refreshed invigorated and ready to roar again most of the major indices closing up again today s&p up about four tenths of a percent the, the dow leading the charge up about six tenths of a percent and uh, the old tech heavy nasdaq uh, closing up uh, the laggard of the of the three only up about two tenths of a percent all of these major indices off their highs from earlier in the day so not quite closing at their highs but hey Bulls can't have everything. You're getting all your up days. Isn't that enough? And, of course, all this green on the screen means VIX cash. You just thought maybe the erosion was done. You thought 2017, a bit of an aberrant outlier year. We're going to be back in the VIX and double digits category. Uh, well, so far, not so good. You saw an eight handle today in VIX cash getting as low as 895 listeners before uh, settling out the end of the day. Right around 915, 914 in that range. So not exactly a, a banner start to the year for all of you who are hoping for a little bit more vol in your, uh, in your markets this year. But we shall see. The year is young, <laughs> four days in or so, and a lot of interesting stuff popping off. Let's pop off to he of the Prime Meridian Fund, a.k.a. the Greasy Meatball. Mr. Meatball, what's been catching your eye in this uh, raucous start to the new year? Oh yeah, raucous. That's that's the way to put it. How about uh, how about the VIX touching below nine uh, both days this year? Uh, we had, or all, I guess this is our third day. I think it's touched below nine on uh, several of the first few days of the year, which in, in of itself is kind of fascinating. Today the low was eight ninety five. Yesterday the low was eight ninety four. Uh, the only day it did not get below nine was on Monday, and that was coming off of a uh, pretty nice move, uh, end of day move on the uh, the 29th. So, uh, you know what? The other thing is, you know, we did end up with a day with the market up and the VIX up. Uh, when that happens, that can be a sign that, uh, hey, maybe uh, maybe things are getting ready ready for a breather. You know, maybe we need a little break here. Uh, it can be a sign of that. I'm not saying that it is, but it certainly can be. Uh, and, you know, that's uh, something to, to certainly think about. And, Mr. Uncle Mike, while you're already rushing uh, to uh, the Copyright Office to register the Prime Meridian Fund, what, uh, <laughs> trying to race the meatball there, what's been, uh, what's been catching your eye in this interesting start uh, to the new year here, sir? Well, I wish we had some type of weather-related event for the Tropic of Cancer or Tropic of Capricorn, but unfortunately we don't. But we do have plenty of other things to talk about today. Um, yeah, I agree with Mark in that uh, you do the theory behind the VIX being higher and the market being higher, especially with the new all-time highs, the fact, and especially we had a pretty decent run-up today, uh, roughly almost a half a percent. But uh, with that, people, the smart money in theory is buying protection uh, in case we have a little bit of a pullback in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but just overall, what was interesting about today is that uh, the financials finally came on board. Uh, throughout the, uh, the last couple of days, uh, we've had a rally 
Uh, but the uh, XLF uh, did not really participate all that much in the rally over the first couple of days, but uh, today it did. So they came on board today. Uh, XLE energy stocks have been doing really well uh, recently. <clears throat> so that's another uh, source of uh, bullish gain uh, for the market. And just a couple of individual names with which we're, uh, we watch and what we're doing and some things that are in some of our funds. Uh, we have uh, IBM has been just on a tear lately. Uh, they have uh, 2018 has been uh, quite the fun year for them. Uh, I've been selling puts in my beloved Moo again. Uh, just yeah. like brought back Moo, my, my second all-time favorite ticker symbol to yuck, uh, the Japanese uh, yen currency. I don't even know if it's around anymore. For I don't think uh, it is. It might be. Uh, that bums me out that that's not there anymore. That was, my all-time, that was my all-time favorite ticker symbol but uh what's your what's your, guess put, what's your put du jour in moo what strike are you playing with oh well it's probably going to be nothing by tomorrow because it with moo it's one where it's such an insanely illiquid um put sale that you have to just sell to open the put and you have to let it expire worthless because the bid ask spreads about nine miles wide uh but uh sold the 61s for january so uh uh I might be able to get out of them for a nickel, maybe. I don't know, but uh, I'm just concerned with uh, trying to actually buy to cover some, such a thing. Uh, and uh, when doing so, that uh, uh, you might not quite get a good fill on that. But well, you know or, what you can, you know what you should try and do: buy the 62s for uh, a nickel or a dime, then you can leg into the put spread for free. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. There you go. So, with that being said, a lot going on, a lot happening. Uh, my beloved shiny silver has been a little bit of a rally since the last time we spoke, but Hey, that was, that was way last, that was last year. Um, and, uh, just excited about the upcoming, the prospects for the bull to return, or I shouldn't say return should stay, uh, to stick around in 2018. I'm looking at your beloved move here, uncle Mike, while we're talking and you'll be proud to know that there's a, uh, there's a what? There's a one lot open on the 61s in Jan. There's a 15 open on the 62 puts and two open on the 60 puts. So a lot of size to get off here. It's all him. It's all you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> all one of you. On the uh, someone traded 100 of the 62 calls. Oh today, yeah, though, look so. at that. The 62 calls. Somebody bought 100 of them today. Someone... Traded a uh, dollar 23. So I'm wondering whether that was with a spread. Nope, that was not a spread. They just they uh, traded a buck 23 100 times. They went out. These yeah, the open interest on those might not be correct because uh, there should be more than that. I'll just say that in the interest of keeping my compliance people happy. The uh, the okay. 60, 62 went out a buck ten at a buck eighty. So uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it if you want to trade moo listeners. Granted, that's a closing market, so a little bit wider than normal, but still nice, nice seventy cent wide market for a uh, effectively a one dollar in the money call. So if you want to trade moo, you want to sling some size moo like Uncle Mike. Uh, bear that in mind. Speaking of size, the big question for 2017 a lot of people had was how what was going to happen with the with the volume? With the, are you going to see some size lighten it up? As we all know, 2017 pretty much the year that VIX died, kicked the bucket, went kaput, went the way of the dodo, and so everyone assumed that was going to just be the death knell for all things options. Yet, uh, as the Rock Lobster likes to mention, options do like a bull market, so that does kick in. And we did see. People actually liking themselves some volatility products as well because they set new records multiple times in 2017, even with the VIX continuing to threaten ever new historic lows. So while the numbers are finally in for 2017, and our friends over there at OCC announcing 2017, a pretty good year. Overall, their third highest total volume year. And again, that's everything OCC clear. So that's, you know, stock loan, that's, uh, that's list, that's futures, that's a whole bunch of stuff in there, not just options. But overall, 4% increase uh, from last year. Uh, total volume for the year, 4.32 billion contracts. That's, again, a 4% increase from about 4.17 uh, in 2016. Let's drill down a little bit farther. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Cleared clear Futures also doing pretty well. Again, those are pretty much the only thing they clear over there is VIX Futures. So uh, good year for VIX Futures. 32% increase in VIX futures. Who would have thought that in a year when VIX pretty much did nothing but erode that VIX futures, 32% increase. Let's drill down a little bit farther into what we're interested in. Of course, the exchange listed options, that overall volume up 3% in 
in 2017, right around 4.2 uh, billion contracts there. Uh, total volume in December, about 336 million contracts, up 3% as well. So December, not a bad month, all things considered. ADV up 4% in 2017 to about 16.7 million contracts a day. So all you're saying, how many options really trade in a given day? It's about 16.7 million contracts last year. Uh, equity options volume, drill it down a little bit farther, 295 million contracts, up 1%. Uh, that's, of course, these are, the, uh, these are the December numbers here now. And uh, ETF options volume, about 130 million contracts. That's down 3% from December 2016. Index options up 11%. Uh, to about 41 million contracts. So interesting. And I guess we uh, we bucked the trend that everyone was saying pretty much all the way through May and June of last year that this is going to be just a terrible year. Then it turned out uh, that uh, anemic vol was no no roadblock to slinging size options. I don't know, Mr. Meatball, a.k.a. of the Prime Meridian Fund or Mr. Uncle Mike of the soon-to-be Prime Meridian slash Tropic of Cancer Fund. Uh, does this surprise either of you or is this kind of what you expected? I will take both of, both of your resounding silences as uh, that you're not at all surprised whatsoever. <laughs> well, I was waiting for him. <laughs> well, I was waiting for him. Well, there, that's why I usually don't toss right, well, the both let, of you. Let's a, age before beauty. After you, Mike. <laughs> no, I think that in a, <clears throat> I, I, we had talked about a little bit on the show a couple. I think it was last week or a, week, a couple weeks ago. Uh, in general, I have my theory is that uh, even though if numbers are doing well in a year like we've had. I think we have more sophisticated traders that exist. I think that uh, there's more people out there that are not afraid to use VIX, that uh, that aren't afraid of uh, trading volatility and believe that volatility can be used as an asset class, whether long or short. And I just think that we have more sophisticated people out there right now. So um, the days of selling far out of the money condors and uh, making 4% in a month and then doing really well for eight months and blowing out your account and then finding a new crop of people looking to make 4% that last for another 10 months. And that day of the option trader, uh, I think for for all of our purposes, is a, is, we're better off that I think a lot of those people are just not coming back, thank God. And we're getting just a lot of uh, more sophisticated people in the world. I could not agree more. Um, you know, it, it's nice to see. I think that the industry has done a good job of educating people. I think the SIBO does a great job of educating people. I think podcasts like this do a lot to dispel rumors. You know, there's there's good option speak, option insider radio, for instance. And then there's bad, you know, then there's st there are still though people, though, that are out there hawking that you should never own. And um, and all you should ever do is just sell, 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 and you know it's it's a problem, and there are people that hawk that, but I like to think that 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 audience is becoming smaller, not bigger. I like that we're in the good we're in the good options talking camp here on Options Insider Radio because we do quite a lot of it here. Speaking of talking about options, and in this particular show. Uh, since we're talking about, you know, year end milestones and all that fun stuff, we took a look back down memory lane for 2017 and pulled up the numbers to see what exactly were you guys actually listening to on this show last year? What were the top five episodes of the option block for 2017? I got the data in front of me, guys, so I obviously can't guess. I'm looking at the article. If you want to check it out for yourself, listeners, listen to all of those shows yourself. It's all compiled neatly for you in one article there on the homepage or follow us on social media. It'll all be there as well. Uh, we'll let, uh, let's let Uncle Mike guess first. Uncle Mike, you got any thoughts? You don't have to guess all five, obviously, but maybe you want to think of some trends, some things that you think were featured in our most popular top five episodes. Have at it, sir. Well, I'm willing to bet the top show, or one, at least one of the top five, uh, I may be right, I may be wrong, but I'll say the show, the first show we did after Trump's first State of the Union address uh, will be one of the top ones, because I remember just the surprised sentiment and how the market rallied uh, after his first State of the Union address. It seemed, from what I remember, everyone thought that, oh, he's going to really say some stuff to embarrass himself or whatever, and then everyone was so shocked 
that it was actually a very presidential speech. I think even Stephen Colbert, the ultimate Trump basher, uh, was saying how good of a how he thought it was a pretty presidential speech speech and was surprised. And then the market rallied. So I'm going to say that at least one of our top shows was the first show after his State of the Union address. Interesting. Interesting logic. I like all of what you're selling. I'll let you know if you're right or not. In a second, let's get Mr. Prime Meridian on here first. So Mr. Meatball slash Prime Meridian slash I like Equator. Not as not as much of a ring to it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways we can go with that. We'll get some more lines of demarcation and Mason Dixon line. Perhaps could be a little bit of uh, of some baggage with that one, but take it for what you will, <laughs> Mr. Meatball. Uh, what do you think would be our top uh, would uh, place amongst our top five episodes last year? Oh, I'm gonna say. The first episode after the North Korean missile launched will be um, will be our top one. So the the first missile launch, not the the one that actually affected markets. Yeah, so the, the only guess. the only one that affected markets, the yes. first one when it was still so shock and awe for us. Now it's like, oh, another Tuesday, another missile. Eh, no big deal. All right, let's break it down here, listeners. We got it set up here on the website. Uncle Mike kind of prescient in his reasoning. Not quite exactly right, but interesting nonetheless. Let's kick it off here. Let's go bottom to top. Number five on our list uh, came out in July, mid-July, listeners. Usually not a, not a banner month for uh, people listening to show. Usually mid-July, people are on vacation doing stuff. Summer days, the dog days of summer approaching. Not exactly hot time for options, but it was. And uh, you guys have a couple of themes for what you really liked last year. Uh, VIX being one, Tesla being another one, and uh, everyone, and this time, the July 14th episode, we profiled the launch of Blue Apron options. They were coming out. Also, I think we started looking at our mystery Tesla puts back on that episode, or right around that time. Uh, so number five is option block 635, Tesla puts, VIX calls, and no love for apron. So July 14th, check it out for yourselves. Number four, we go back to earlier in the year, uh, episode 601. The Umbridge Hour, <laughs> interesting title. Uh, we that came out on excuse me March tenth, twenty seventeen. This is when we a lot, you guys liked the new listings last year. That was a big theme. Uh, we talked about the impending launch of Snap options. You guys snapped that up. Uh, we also talked about Timber Hill getting out of the market making business. And Uncle Mike finally broke down his mysterious BBI index. That was March tenth, number four on our top five. Number three, uh, we move back to the middle of the year. This is uh, episode six twenty three. Uh, perfectly titled, How to Sell Premium with a Low VIX. Uh, you guys had that question last year. So we touched on it many times, but including on this episode here from May 26th, episode 623. Uh, also had some earnings stuff in there for Amazon and a few others, Best Buy. So there was some earnings-related love going on there as well. And number two, why I said Uncle Mike was kind of prescient, because the top two are actually early in the year. Uh, number two was number 592, entitled The Apple of Yesteryear. You guys also like yourselves a little bit of Apple. That's playing out here on our list. We talked about the explosive Q1 Apple earnings announcement. Also had some breakdowns for Chipotle and Amazon and GoPro. So you guys ate that one up, pun intended. And number one came a little bit later. That also was not that far away from the State of the Union, so probably why that one may be having a little bit of resonance right after, not that long after Inauguration Day. Uh, so uh, we saw a little bit of interesting thing. Number one came a few weeks later, February 24th, so about a month after Inauguration Day. And you can probably imagine what was kind of on our mind at that point already. We were starting to see the surprise was in, maybe the fix was in, depending on if you read a lot of Zero Hedge or not. Uh, but the, the t episode 597 entitled The Impossible VIX Debate was our number one episode from February 24th, 2017. Uh, we talked Tesla on that one again. You guys just can't get enough Tesla. We had earnings breakdowns for Tesla and Fitbit, we talked about the Snap IPO that was looming at that time. Uh, and then we also had the first of what would turn out to be many how low can this VIX thing go uh, discussions on the show. Because right about late February, right about the time we were first noticing, yeah, maybe maybe this, uh, this whole Trump volatility thing is not going to play out the way we thought it's going to. <laughs> but it seemed like a bit of an aberration at the time. Who knew a year or so later that that would be pretty much uh, the new regime we're living in. Uh, so there we go, gents. Uncle Mike, you were actually a little bit closer to the mark than maybe you thought. That is good to know. I know our audience, possibly. <laughs> possibly. They are a mystery. Uh, yeah, a couple of couple of themes. They like VIX, which we talk about all the time. They like Tesla. They like earnings. 
Uh, they like new listings like Snap and uh, and uh, Blue Apron and a few others. A lot of things that mix in there, and they like you know all things to do with low VIX. Uh, Mr. Meatball, any surprises for you there, sir, in that list? Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I guess I should have thought about the earnings piece. That that's gonna that's that's especially around Apple's blow up. That was that was a really uh, just a major move. So that was that was pretty interesting. So no no huge surprises though. Nope, our audience is consistent in what they like, and we'll be consistent in delivering that to you as we continue on here, right on with the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Another new year, another new Odd Block, another new just rash of garbage Tesla puts lighting it up today. You guys clearly love this stuff. Uh, so we'll keep keep an eye on them. We'll keep monitoring them for you. It seems like, Mark, uh, since the last time you've been on or so, the love has spread. You know, we talked a lot in 2017 about these Jan 2019 50 puts in Tesla, which are currently trading 53 at 59. Uh, so they're not giving away these uh, quote-unquote garbage slash catastrophe puts. But if that's not far enough out for you, then the 2020 50 puts are doing a robust business. In fact... Looking at today's numbers, today was a pretty active day on, those, on the 2019s, almost 300 lighting it up out there, over 36,000 open out there. But today, the 2020s say, pshaw to you, we're going to do 2x that, 629 to be precise out here of the Jan 2020 50 puts lighting it up. A total of 5,500 right about there uh, open on this strike. So people, and if that's not enough of you, the Jan 2020 70 puts doing nearly 2,800 uh, today it looks like maybe a ratio the 120 70 put spread going up about 1300 contracts and change by about 2700 contracts and change so put that in your ratio put spreads pipe and smoke it there so much weird paper going up as you start getting into the farther months and the farther out of the money strikes here in good old tesla i don't know mr meatball for the forthcoming uh prime meridian slash mason dixon line fund are these puts uh, on the on the radar well, I'm wondering with whether this was done as a spread, because the ratio the ratio is almost two by three by one, but I don't think so. Um, I do think that it does appear that the 120 70 was a put one by two. Um, that went up. Looks like uh, the last one to go up went up uh, 344 versus 808, so they paid 20 cents for the one by two. Um, if you look at how bad their production is, I, I don't think this is – is in, if I was a debt holder, if I was a convertible note holder, holder if I was you know, any type of, of owner of some sort of Tesla security, um, I, I don't think that, that these are that crazy. I'll be honest. Uh, I mean look at the – the look at the production problems. The only viable business that that is current Elon Musk is a brilliant guy, but it currently is only viable business that that is running is SpaceX. That's the only one he's ever going to make money on. And the sooner Tesla people figure that out, um, I mean, the Solar City deal was just highway robbery of Tesla shareholders, and all it's going to do is is destroy equity. Um, Eventually, all of these guys are betting that people are going to figure it out, and all that open interest on that down on that downside might be worth it. They're already building a huge 2020 50 position. The open interest on the 2020 on the 2020 50 puts mark is already almost 5,500. So I know it's crazy. It's madness. there is uh, <laughs> there is a lot. Uh, there are this is a hedge. All right. And it's not as stupid as maybe many people think. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a, uh, a strong Tesla bull over the weekend, actually. 
And, uh, and I think he, I think this latest news maybe has even uh, shaken him out. He's not writing aggressive Tesla puts anymore, not uh, really a big buyer of the Gigafactory the way he was and all the other things. So who knows? Maybe that's, that's the anecdotal canary in the coal mine that maybe even some of the retail are starting to, uh, to awaken to what's uh, foot out there. Either way, someone's awakening out in 2020 for size because these puts are trading. Ratio put spreads trading out there. Uh, it is, I'll have to look, I'll have to parse that ratio a little bit more because it's an interesting, you can pick up the 70s and then do two. <laughs> the others, that's, uh, if you're getting that, if you're getting that far out there, then uh, I don't I might be scared to sell the two at that point. But that's a conversation for another day. Let us know what you guys think about the ever expanding just pantheon of Tesla catastrophe puts that continue to be lighting it up, even though the stock kind of barely, barely shrugging off this pretty bearish news today, only off not even a full percent, about eight tenths of a percent on the day. So even this news that they're delaying their much ballyhooed uh, Model 3, not gonna be able to meet the numbers they were talking about, at least not as fast as they said, even that's not enough to derail the hype train that is Tesla. Let's move on to uh, one of Uncle Mike's favorites. He loves Japan. Kidding. This is the iShares MSCI Japan ETF ticker symbol. Our old friend EWJ closing today sixty one dollars and eighty seven cents. Good day for EWJ. Off up over one percent, one point two percent actually out there. This is the name that does about twenty five thousand contracts a day today. Doing about one hundred and twelve thousand contracts, so quite a bit more. About seventy and a half to one calls over puts. That's pretty much because the lion's share of this paper came in one looks like pretty sizable call roll. Uh, we got a Jan sixty sixty two vertical going up against a Feb sixty two sixty four vertical, doing it twenty two thousand two hundred and seventy times. Do the math. You got eighty eight thousand plus contracts going up in this one vertical of the 111,000 or so. So the lion's share of the paper going up in this one sizable roll. What first caught our eye was this Jan 60, 62, like I said, going up 22,000 times and change. Uh, the 60 is going up. Actually, both of these going up ask side, which is kind of interesting. Again, speaks probably more uh, to the execution of this one than anything. Doubt they were legging into a stupid here. <laughs> uh, 22,000 and change going up on these. Worth noting is a size open interest on both of these strikes, uh, the 60s have about 70,000. The 62s have about 25,000. Uh, both clearly enough to cover uh, the OI slinging today. Very, just barely on the 62s, though, which has, again, all the hallmarks of a roll. And then, you know, they decided we want to keep the party alive. We want to roll, but we're not going to roll too far. And we're going to roll a little bit up, actually, because those 62s are kind of at the money now. So we're going to change to a new, still keeping the same width of the spread, still going two bucks, and they're going out another month. So they bought themselves another month here. It was the Feb 62-64, again going up 22,270 times, this time for 65 cents, doing it 86 cents for the 62s, 21 for the 64 is going up pretty much mid and aggressively below the bid <laughs> on the 64s. So interesting strike selection opening on both of those strikes, I should note, by the way. No open interest to speak of, really, uh, on either of those. So interesting that they're keeping the party alive, at least presumably. Let's look here at the what the charts are telling us here for the past year here at EWJ. EWJ, of course, a frequent offender here on the old odd block and it has been kind of a, a long steady upward climb here for ewj kicking off last year right around the 50 handle and again today coming in 62 almost having a nice little run just in the last couple of sessions this week actually with uh, about oh about a two handle rally just uh, pretty much since the new year so Good time to be an EWJ bull here to kick off the new year. And it seems, Mr. Meatball, that our friend here is keeping his bullish love alive. Are you feeling that same thing here? And are you also, in the Prime Meridian Fund, quite bullish in all things Japan? Oh, yeah. Um, this looks like uh, it may have been uh, the open interest on the 62s matches about the size. So I'm wondering whether this is a close or an op uh, a close. Um and yeah, I mean, uh, at close and a reopen, uh, it looks like that. And um, yeah, he apparently is taking his money and throwing it for Japan going higher. Now, the thing to remember with EWJ is that there's also a currency piece. So, um, you know, as uh, the U.S. gets weaker, that also affects how uh, stocks price themselves in 
the U.S. dollar gets weaker, that actually affects how um, stocks and EWJ price themselves. So there's uh, some moving pieces of this trade. Let's keep moving the pieces of the odd block on as well to a name we haven't talked about in a while. This is good old Marriott International. Don't get into the uh, hospitality sector too often here on the show. Maybe we need to rotate that in a little more. You the few hospitality folks here on the show. Uh, but kicking it off today, Marriott closing 135.70, off about half a percent. So not feeling the broad market love out here today for Marriott. This is a name that does about... 7,700 contracts a day, day, excuse me, today doing about 57,000, 23 to 1 calls over puts. And once again, we got a bit of a, uh, looks like actually no rolling here, just uh, opening paper. Uh, maybe, well, potentially, potentially not as we get to the April leg. We'll get to that in a second. But what first caught our eye out here was a ratio vertical in Feb. It was the Feb 140, 145 call spread going up. Looks like paper scooping the Feb 140s and then doubling down, selling 2x of the 145s, doing it for 320 and 140, so 280 for the 2x, so doing the whole thing for a whopping 40 odd cents there, and uh, doing it again, open interest, pretty much non existent on both of those strikes. Uh, so opening on both sides. So we got a nice little vertical going up for size, 30,000 contracts total here in Feb. In uh, good old Marriott, this is about five, about four and a half handles or so out of the money here for this vertical. That in and of itself is worthy of note. But then later on in the day, oh, looks like about maybe it's about 20 odd minutes or so. It's not too long. Uh, it seems like we saw some more size paper come in on the call side. This time in April, it was 20,000 of the April 135s coming in. Looks like paper blasting away on those for seven dollars and 50 cents so those are a little rich and given where they went out today that's not a bad price they went out 690 at 730 um doing about 20,000 of those again uh, open interest is about 21,000 on that strike so it could have been perhaps uh someone which would be a funky backwards roll we saw a few of those last year which is worthy of note but it would be odd and that of course brings us to the odd block the kids potentially could be closing out these in the money 135s that had some juice on them and then going back and saying, you know, let's go back to Feb, a little bit cheaper month, get a little bit less time, and get a little bit more out of the money vertical on that. Or they could be piling in to the uh, the twenty thousand and adding twenty thousand plus more. Or it could be completely unrelated paper, about fifteen minutes apart from the other. Even though that doesn't really pass a smell test either. Again, let's look back at the old chart of Marriott. It's been a nice banner year. Uh, for these guys, starting the year last year, about 83 bucks, ending the year right around 135 So not a bad run for good old Marriott. And if our friend here has his way, uh, then potentially wanting that run to continue if all this paper is as it seems. Mr. Meatball, what say you to this seemingly potentially backwards ratio roll, sir? Yeah, you got to love uh, – it's always fun to see all the the craziness trade. Um I think that uh, yeah, this these names have been really, uh, you know, hotels have been doing great, uh, Marriott, Hilton, all these names, and um, this appear this is a kind of looks like you know he maybe he's looking for a slowdown in the move, you know, taking because he changed his whole position, right? It's now more of a, you know, it went from kind of a straight long gamma to now more of a uh, does well if we have a slow crawl up for the next few weeks. Uh, so definitely a, a guy did not like uh, decay would be my bet. So kind of a, kind of a funky one, right? Yeah. You, you don't put, usually he, see that he, guy go from simple to complex. <laughs> he read a book or two since he put on those Aprils. And then he said, wait, he said, wait a minute, this things are decaying. I don't like this at all. <laughs> what can I do to get out of this? Oh, I know. I'll roll into uh, not quite a, a, ratio. Net, a net zero outlet ratio, but pretty cheap. I think it was around 40 cents uh, for that one by two. So uh, interesting, interesting action. They picked up maybe a little bit of Natenberg, maybe picked up a Sebastian book there and decided he wanted to trade some options for Edge. We shall never know. The mystery remains, unless he writes in to the show. As we continue on, speaking of mysteries, our final mystery uh, we got rolls on the brain today, weird ones, and uh, we got another weird one to, to wrap it up here in Dow DuPont, Inc., ticker symbol DWDP, 
Closing today, $74.45, up nearly 2%. So not a bad day here for Dow DuPont, outpacing the market uh, quite a bit here in terms of percentage moves. Uh, this is the name that does about 10, almost 11,000 contracts a day. So pretty active, doing about 56,000 today, about six and a half to one calls over puts. And once again, our eye of Sauron was drawn to the call side of the spectrum. Listeners out here in the weeklies are playing in the weeklies this time in DuPont. If you thought that weird backward roll was kind of interesting, this one, potentially backward roll. <laughs> uh, this one's also interesting, just more for the, uh, the size, but also for perhaps the time frame. We saw the weekly expiring, excuse me, on the Jan 26, uh, the 26th of January, the 74 calls going up uh, about 10,000 times, almost 11,000 total on the day with a big block, 10,380 going up on our friends, the Philly this morning uh, with for about a buck 32 aggressive, probably put up a little bit late too, because it's aggressively below the bid, but it does seem like they were closing these bad boys out because they're pretty much uh, almost exactly the OI of 10,968 traded on today's action so it looks like someone perhaps closing out the 74s in weeklies which indeed those are about 50 cents in the money now so they are pretty much at the money in the money calls now and then deciding he wasn't done though he wants to keep the party alive but he doesn't want to spend a lot of money to do it because he only went out and bought himself pretty much another week <laughs> he got himself the uh, feb expiring on the february 2nd 75 calls so he went out a week and up one strike Picked up about the same number, close to, to actually started off the day with a couple blocks of about 9,000 or so. Total on the day, nearly 14,000. So doing a wee bit more of these bad boys, too. Uh, again, picking them up for about a buck 43, a buck 44, somewhere in that range. No OI to speak of there. So it looks like it's an open roll. Usually, when you got a little bit more size on the second leg, it tends to be a little bit of house money. And the fact that those 74s are in the money probably reflecting that. He made a little bit of cash on his uh, straight up out of the money DuPont calls, and now he wants to keep that party alive for at least another week. Let's go back to the charts here one final time, listeners. Uh, Dow DuPont kicking off the year last year, about 58 bucks, closing the year at about 72 or so. So not a bad year, again, for Dow DuPont either. And then the last week or so, just rally ho mode, again, up to where we are today, about 74 and a half, so up about another two and a half bucks since then. So those calls were looking juicy. He's going to go one week at a time, Mr. Meatball. What do you think of this uh, one-week roll-in strategy here? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess it's a decent approach. You, you, you go with it till, uh, till you, you start feeling uncomfortable about it, and then you stop. It's uh, certainly interesting. Um, you don't see that use of weeklies very often. But uh, God bless him for trying. And God bless us all, everyone, even all of our odd block candidates. May you all find fortune or at the very least figure out what the heck it is that you're doing. Because it seems like some of you maybe, perhaps, uh, don't know. But we'll figure it out soon enough as we keep on rolling. It's Thursday, but you know, like we said, you guys have been hitting us up with a lot of questions of late. We might make sure you guys get some love on the show, too. So Uncle Mike has graciously offered to step aside for today and allow us to do instead a nice little mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. You guys know the drill. The Mail Block, the portion of the show where you guys hit us up. Questions, comments, insights. A lot of you have done that. We'll get to that in a second. First, we've got to pay off uh, some questions we've been asking you guys of late. Uh, we asked you last year, the end of the year, what's your enduring market memory or event or trend of 2017 a lot of you guys wrote in with your others we shared those already uh we got more we'll share those another time perhaps <laughs> gotta keep rolling uh but we have instead we gave you four choices the death of vix the rise of bitcoin the unstoppable bull or other with a bunch of other ones and we got nearly half 49 percent saying it was the unstoppable bull so i think uncle mike maybe voted early and voted often in this poll. That's the Chicago way after all. Uh, 32%. So I thought Bitcoin put more of a challenge. And early on it did. Bitcoin was kind of winning and the bull just kind of gathered steam like it did last year and never looked back. And 16% only saying the death of VIX. For our audience, I was surprised. I thought that, that would rank a little higher. And then 3% going other. This week we asked you, kicking off the year, new year, pretty simple question. One we had to wrestle with on volatility views last week. Now we turn the tables on you guys and we say, hey, Pretty easy one for our first year, or perhaps 
deceptively easy, actually quite hard. Quite think, quite simply, what do you think? Where do you think VIX is going to close at the end of 2018? Gave you four nice, reasonable tranches that you could kind of settle in. Gave you between seven and a half and nine ninety nine, so pretty much the single digits. Uh, between 10 and about 12.49, uh, so nice low teens there. 12 and a half to 14.99, so right getting close to those mid-teens, or pretty much above 15. We didn't get much higher than that because you're getting crazy town up there, even though my crystal ball pick was for there towards the end of the year. But spoiler alerts, we'll get to that later. Uh, Mr. Let's start with Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike, uh, what, where are you falling on this weighty question, and what do you think our audience is picking? Well, I mean, it's questions like this that uh, make me happy that I'm not a VIX trader and that whenever clients call me with questions on term structure about VAL products and VIX futures, I typically say, hold on one moment, call up uh, Andrew or Mark and then call them back. <laughs> um, so, but uh, with that uh, on the VIX and the craziness that we had last year, I just have a hard time believing we're going to stay single digits. Uh, but on the flip side, uh, as a bull, uh, in just the stock market in general, I don't really think it's going to be a huge year for the VIX increasing. So I'm going to go in the, uh, I think it'll be just over 10. So I believe that was the third choice. I'm not sure, forgot the order of it, but nonetheless, I'll say I think it was between 10 and 12 and a half. All right. I'll put you down for that tranche there, sir. Mr. Meatball, where are you falling? I know you talked about it on uh, on on vol views maybe you've uh, maybe you've changed your mind maybe you got something else and more importantly where do you think our audience is falling all right so i'm well i what i forgot what i said but did i say nine what did i say nine and a half i said something really low i'm not the pull i thought you said something Didn't in I? the tens i'll have to pull up the notes i'll do that while you think of your new answer all right well my new answer is going to be even lower i'm convinced we are going to be single digits. Um, and uh, on, there's some reasons why. Part of the problem is, is that a huge rally of 20 points in the S&P or a huge sell-off of 20 points in the S&P no longer even equals a 1% move. In fact, it's getting close to not equally. In fact, it no longer uh, is a 75% move. So... In order for us to see the VIX get a lot higher, we need you're going to need to start seeing 30 and 40 point moves a day, and I mean a one percent a VIX of 15. If you're looking for a VIX of 15 or 16, you would li literally need the S&P to expect to move 27 points a day for the next 30 days. So, I have the more I think about it, the more. I am on board with a VIX of nine. <laughs> the realized vol math is inescapable, and yet I did predict a higher VIX uh, for vol views. The show brain and sometimes the realized math brain have to be at odds with each other sometimes here. And then the big hosting seat. Speaking of which, Mr. Meatball, you picked an 11.01 .01 to end the year. Oh, I, well, let's change that to 9.01. Well, I don't. I don't know if we're allowing uh, second guesses. I don't know. You might might be locked well, in for eleven point oh well, one, sir. That is your pick. You must deal with right. it. Sometimes you know it's like being on the floor. You make your market in in five seconds, and you you live with the horrible, horrible consequences for years to come. All right. Let's see what else you guys have on the brain. You got a lot of stuff. Um, what we got here? This one is from Scott Somer. He's written in a bunch of times recently, and uh, we've just been busy with shows. Sorry, Scott and all the others out there. Um, he says he's got a specific answer, a question about a name. I'll have to pull up this name here while we're talking. I don't really watch it on a daily basis. He's got, um, at a, he says, at 11 a.m. on December 22nd, Riot Stock, ticker symbol R-I-O-T, traded at 24.20. Normally, you would expect the 23 call to trade for $1.20 more then the 23 put, given the fact that it is in the money. He is, he is right. This morning, the January expiring on the 19th, 23 calls were only trading for 10 cents above the 23 put. Am I missing something for this to be normal pricing, or is there something else I need to know about this? Uh, he wrote back in with more ideas on this. He said with the stock, uh, I'm not sure if this is the same question. He also mentioned something about... Uh, a June 5, oh, this might be something else, uh, but um, the, uh, yeah, you know, so it looks like Riot, I just pulled it up, 
while we're talking, and, and once I see what the name is, it doesn't surprise me. It is Riot Blockchain Inc. Uh, trading for $24.27. Just a few uh, weeks ago, they were trading for 15 14 bucks actually, and they had a nice run-up in mid-December. Again, I don't look at this name, mostly stats. It does about, oh, it's actually moving some uh, options of late. About 20, it's averaging about 39,000 contracts a day. So it's lighting it up uh, of late. Uh, this name, including today, doing some decent paper out here today. Um, again, this has, I'll have to look at this name and the date in question. This seems like a uh, hard to borrow kind of squeezy thing lighting up. The key he was mentioning there is he mentioned the call in relation to the put, which is also always a, a fun way of looking at it. Put call parity. Uh, of course, 10 cents over. Usually you see that happening in names that are, you can't really get out any other way. And like a blockchain, that would make sense. Uh, they're kind of hard to borrow in that sense. I don't know, Uncle Mike or Mr. Uh, Meatball, either of you guys, I'm guessing no, but either of you guys follow block, Riot Blockchain Inc. And you have any thoughts about what was going up out there a few weeks ago? I do. I've been keeping an eye on this one, actually. It is extremely hard to borrow. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Um, and... What's interesting is if you read their description, the company does two things. They do human genetic testing and they buy Bitcoin. So, I, I, <laughs> two low know, volatility things. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> they're, they're basically all they need to do is, is, is uh, sell uh, dynamite, uh, dynamite um, wicks and they'd be, they'd be good to go. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, they, they're, it is really hard to borrow. This stock went from like 40 to 23 in about a day. Uh, one of the crazier things I've seen. So, it is certainly not one that I am I am not surprised at any level on uh, on it being that hard to borrow. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually kind of surprised the calls are trading. At a premium, to yeah, any, anywhere close. With how hard it is to borrow. <laughs> yeah, Scott, whenever you see, and all our listeners, whenever you see book call parity like this getting crazy out of whack, we've mentioned it before a lot of times with new listings, you see this where it's new, not a lot of float, very hard to borrow, but usually something else is going on fundamentally with the underlying to drive this. In this case, you have a name that you can't short. Pretty much any other way, it's really hard to do so. So guess what people are doing? They're crushing calls, they're buying puts, they're doing synthetics to get short. And what does that do? Pretty much exactly what you talked about. Makes the calls cheap, makes the puts expensive. In your case, uh, crazy rich. But yeah, they, as Mark pointed out, the fact that the calls have any premium left to them is kind of fun at this point and interesting. So yeah, whenever you see these weird things shaping up and it seems like the market's giving you free money, uh, you do a little do a little extra digging. <laughs> Usually in these types of scenarios, it is something like a hard to borrow or it's a new listing or, or maybe there's some weird corporate action at work. Uh, do a search for that. Do a search for the ticker and hard to borrow. If you can't find anything, do a search at OCC in the ticker. Maybe there's a corporate action uh, you don't know about that's causing something weird to happen, a reverse split or a crazy dividend, something like that. Uh, but usually, 99.9% .9 of the time, there's something... Some, the game is afoot. You just got to figure out what the game is. But something like that, you see, read the tea leaves, you get an instant sense of hard to borrow. And you can kind of uh, do, do the rest for there. A lot of these questions are long. This guy wants to know the weirdest thing we've seen in the market. That's going to take a while. Um, this guy, um, McGill Montreal, he's following up. He wrote back to us, I guess, back in October. He told us about some too large... Uh, 3,000 lot, 30 strike puts on October 9th. This is in our old odd block friend, uh, Gilead Active Weir. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually Gil. I thought it was Gilead, but this is actually Gildan Active Weir, <laughs> what he was talking about. Uh, he asked us, we talked about it, I think, on the show back in mid-October. Uh, he wanted to know why anyone would pick up 3,000 puts uh, in this name. He wrote back in to say, hey, by the way, those puts I mentioned, uh, they returned over 100%. Uh, what are they? They were the, they were the thirty strike. He doesn't say what m month they were trading though, so I'm assuming they were that month. I'll have to go back in and dig, but hey, you know that should certainly be the case. I'm looking at the chart here really quickly, and going back to oh, right around the, uh, that time of that expiration. You're right, there was a nice little dip here in Gildan Activewear. So our friend here could have been somewhat well informed, or could have been just concerned about earnings. Usually, you see big blocks like those going up. Usually, it's an underlying holder they're picking up. Uh, some earnings protection. And it looks like he needed it because the stock sold off right after earnings in October down to about 28 bucks. So maybe that person wasn't uh, 
wasn't as uh, as happy as you thought because you probably took more of a bath on the stock. I'll have to go dig into the OI and see exactly when they opened and closed and what they did to see. But thanks for the update there. All you guys who send in these types of tips and ideas and things, thanks for those updates. Keep them coming. We'll get to more on Monday, I promise you. But we got to keep on rolling with our final segment. It is time for our first Around the Block of 2018. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, time to profile what's on our radar here for all of 2018. No, I'm just kidding. Just for the next uh, week or so into the weekend. Uh, we are still playing that uh, watch and see dance for VIX. Will it, won't it? Probably won't have the answer this week. We shall see. Uh, we have earnings coming up on the horizon. Not quite yet. We got a little bit of time for that, but they are starting to return again. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but other than that, uh, a few other things on the old radar. Perhaps we'll start with you, Senior Uncle Mike. What is on your radar for the rest of this week into the weekend, sir? Uh, a few things. We have 25,000 is a key number now for Dow. It's a uh, mental uh, benchmark number, so to speak. Uh, we also have 2,700 on the SPX. Uh, we've crossed those numbers, and can we hold them now? Um, I also, I believe we have non-farm tomorrow as well, if I'm not mistaken, but I have not looked on my um, events as of yet. But uh, nonetheless, I'll be watching the futures at 7.30 in the morning tomorrow, as per usual. Uh, but uh, got a lot, a uh, lot to look forward to this January, and uh, excited about the new year. Yeah, I did mention too. Uh, I've got to mention next week, of course, is going to be the big consumer electronics show. We see a lot of action in the tech sector during that week. Sometimes, remember, Nvidia began its massive run up a couple of years ago over that show, and people writing into us now looking looking for some names. Uh, like Watt, they say, is going to get bought by Apple during electronic show, W-A-T-T. -T. So who knows? People are writing in with ideas for that. So that is something to look forward to here as we kick off the new year. Maybe a little bit of juice in the tech sector for that week. And round us out here, Mr. Prime Meridian. What do you keep an eye on for the rest of this week, sir? Mike is right. We do. It is the first Friday, so non-farms looming. You keep an eye on those, sir? Yes, of course. We've got non-farms. And, uh, you know, earnings season is not as far off as we may think. So starting to see some of that. And... Um, yeah, I think it's just uh, what is going to happen. And then, you know, we got the Olympics coming up, which could be interesting. Uh, but really, it's just, you know, will we get a protected sell off anytime in the first quarter? Who knows? Right now, my gut says no. And the bell is ringing. I say, yeah, I think your train is here, sir. So we'll, uh, we'll get rolling with the final part of the show here. We'll do our send off. Your gut's also telling you a strong double digits in uh, in VIX cash. So uh, there you go. You can't can't go backseas on those bad boys. Don't worry. You're way lower than me. So uh, fear not, sir. All right. That's going to do it for our first option block of 2018 fun. Glad to have you guys with us here to kick off the new year. If you want to, go check out that article where we profile the top five episodes and fun conversations, debates. Maybe you missed some of them. They're good listening. Even a while later, of course, we always answer questions, talk about things that are pretty much evergreen on the show, as well as some timely stuff, so you get a good mix of stuff. So you can always go back and listen to an OB, even after the fact, and enjoy it for what it is. But before we go, let's go around the horn one more time. Let's kick it off with, uh, with Uncle Mike. Sir, if I want to perhaps, you know, I'm sick of us paying those ticket charges, or perhaps I like to sling some skew, what should I do, sir? Well, give me a call by all means. Two exciting things that we have coming up. If you are in the St. Charles area, Thursday, uh, January 11th, we're going to have the first option, the St. Charles Investing Club, which I am the uh, founder of. Uh, tw uh, we have about 30 of my closest friends are now members of that club. Uh, we're going to have our first meeting of the year. Stop on by. For information, contact me. I'll give you my contact info in a moment. Second thing I want to mention is the Mike Tussaw curse has finally been lifted out of Buffalo. The Chicago Cubs had the Billy Goat curse for all those years. Buffalo had the Mike Tussaw curse to where they hadn't made the playoffs since they cut me. Well, the Mike <laughs> Tussaw curse has been lifted, everybody. The Bills are in the playoffs. Go Buffalo. We are going to win it this year. If interested in attending the option club or getting rid of those pesky ticket charges, contact me at 312 212-3531 uh, or shoot me an email at mtosaw at rcmfs.com It only took, what, 17, 18 years? So it bodes well for the uh, for the Cisco curse, so they should be right around time to, to poise to move, right? 
There you go. There you go. All things, all things turn around in the end. And if you're thinking of yourself, you know, I want a nice fund uh, that is also matched to some sort of line of demarcation, or perhaps you want a book about options trading, or perhaps you want a webinar, or perhaps you just uh, you just like want to talk greasy Italian food. Mr. Meatball, what do you got for him, sir? Yeah, you know, I'm doing a webinar on the VIX tonight. It will be on our blog when uh, if you're listening to this after the fact. So go to optionpick.com slash blog to listen to the webinar. And then, yeah, if you are a high net worth investor interested in a smarter way to approach uh, volatility and or uh, being long the S&P, uh, reach out to me, Mark at Carmen Line Capital. I uh, would be love to talk to you about how we're doing things smarter. I'm personally waiting for the Mason Dixon line fun, but to each their own. If you're listening live, head on over to Option Pit, or you can see the link uh, to Mark's webinar. If you haven't gotten enough of Mark live yet, and uh, you want to get a little more in before the end of the day, the link is retweeted on us, or just go to Mark at Option Pit uh, on Twitter. You can get the link there as well. And you too can enjoy the webinar. All you listen to after the fact, head on over to the site and get the archived goodness over there and on behalf of the greasiest of meatballs who's going to turn to me for all of his fun naming needs in the future as well as uncle mike and indeed myself i want to thank all of you out there for joining us here to kick off the new year in 2018 we quite literally couldn't do it without you just be talking to ourselves and that would be weird and we'll see you next week for more of the option block The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.